right in the middle of the Yukon Flats Refuge, about 35 miles southwest of Fort Yukon. And one of the things we're really interested in studying is where do the lynx go when their population crashes? Do they, do they, are they eaten out of house and home and do they go away like snowshoe hare or do they move? And the reason we've got our projects, our project study areas across the landscape is so we can try and detect that movement pattern with dispersing length. We're hypothesizing, guessing, that lynx move from areas that they're born in to areas where there's more food when the snowshoe hare population crashes. In order to study lynx and their movements, you've got to capture them. And you've got to outfit them with a radio collar. So we're using satellite, Global Positioning System Radio Collars. So the way we catch cats is we go out and we put up, we basically establish a trap line of live walk-in traps. These are real simple rectangular boxes made out of PVC and chicken wire. They have a sliding door on the front and we'll put some bait and there's a treadle in the back and when they step on the treadle and they go for the bait, then the door shuts. We have a monitor, we have a tra trap monitor set up on the door and we're monitoring the trap monitor daily so we know if the doors are open or the doors are closed. And so when we get a trip and a door closes, we go out by snow machine and we check our trap line. So we're out, we spend probably 50 or 60 miles a day out on our snow machines checking, checking traps, the ones that have, that have gone off. And so this way we can get to the animals quickly, get them outfitted with a, with a radio collar, take some samples from them, primarily some hair and whisker samples for future DNA work, and get them on their way. They've got you know, a very good sense of smell, and we're really focusing on their sense of smell to bring them into these, to these traps. We put a lot of scent out, and so they're very inquisitive, both by smell and visually. So we put a lure on that, on that bait to draw them in, and we also put up some visual attractants. We'll have a grouse wing floating on a tree nearby, or we'll have a, like a CD-ROM disc hanging from a tree which reflects light. So these are just visual cues and, and scent cues that we're using to bring them in, but they're very curious, just like a typical cat. It's precedent setting and so I think we're going to learn things about lynx that we never learned about before and I think we're doing some groundbreaking work. There's never been a, a regional type of lynx study across the landscape like this. It's never been done before.